What's up, Fit Body Bootcamp? How are you today? I'm Diana Coolian, the recipe hacker. And guys, we've got a guest in our studio who's kind of a big deal. This is Matt Wilbur. And for those of you who don't know him, Matt is actually our VP of product and results here at Fit Body Bootcamp. And he also has, is it seven locations? Seven locations. He has seven locations in Michigan. Um, introduce yourself. Well, I would say uh, I should just introduce me, but yes, I do have seven locations in Michigan. We have about uh, 5,000 clients, and over the last six years, we've actually helped over 225 people lose 50 pounds or more. Um, and also, we've had a big hand in uh, helping with creating the 10-week challenge. Yeah, so guys, even if you're not in Michigan and you're not going to one of Matt's locations, like you're getting his, his materials and his information with the challenge, and he's instrumental in just us making the Fit Body Bootcamp experience as amazing as it can be to help all of you across the world lose the weight and just find your fitness lifestyle. So I asked Matt, because he is based in Michigan, and he gets to come out and visit us here in California several times a year. But last time I actually was out in Michigan, and I was like, Matt, would you potentially come and cook with me because the people want to see you and I was curious if you cook at all. Well I do cook but we keep it very very simple. In the challenge we talk about keeping things simple uh, because sometimes when we try to make things too complex and the harder it is to do the less likely you are to be consistent with doing it and consistency mm -hmm. is what drives results. So today we are going to be talking about simple and we're actually going to be talking about some of the things that I actually eat, but Diana's actually made them probably more flavorful and taste even better, so you're going to enjoy them a lot more. And the cool things about these recipes is they're vi very diverse and you can make uh, tons of different combinations with them if you're currently doing the challenge. Um, you know, you have your carb meals, you have your protein and fat meals. All these can be changed very easily to add variety to your nutrition plan because we also know that you like variety. You don't like just eating the same things. Yeah. But just small tweaks make these things feel like you're eating an entire new meal, which is co totally cool. And we are going to go into the different tweaks that you can make with each of these recipes. And like Matt said, they are very simple. So he emailed me back with like five recipe ideas. And it was just like, like I do ground beef in a skillet and I mix, you know, yogurt with protein. So I'm like, OK, cool. I can build five recipes out of this. So Matt has never made these with my spin on them. So that's going to be fun. We're going to get into that. Um, but I want to touch on last week's topic. So guys, last week, huge important topic, Aaron and I were here and we were talking about identifying your bad habits. These are the habits that have led you to where you are today with your weight, with your health, identifying what those bad habits are so that we can then replace them with healthy habits. You guys gave some amazing feedback. Thank you all so much for contributing. You know, like Aaron and I were saying, sometimes we don't realize the bad habits that we have, yeah. but then when we have someone else share, then we can go like, oh, you know what? Oh, I do that too. Like, oh my gosh, that is, you know, really getting in the way of me being as fit and healthy as I can be. So I like to give stuff away. All right. I don't know if you've it. watched my show yes. before, but so I haven't won anything yet. <laughs> well, you're here. That's I mean, that's the <laughs> ultimate prize. I get to hang out, so that is the ultimate prize. <laughs> okay, guys. So last week, we were working with a food processor, and you guys know I I couldn't live a day without my food processor. Do you have a food processor? I do. I use it okay. for the recipe that we're gonna make today. Perfect, because I would have given you one if you know if you didn't have one. So yes. that would have been your prize. And I know how to take the lid off. Yes, we practiced. <laughs> I'm not gonna make that mistake again. But guys, I really want to give a shout out to Krista Vermeer. Thank you so much for sharing. Krista said that her biggest negative habit was emotional eating. And specifically, she would go for sugar. So she would spend money at Starbucks and she would get ice cream. And as she's been doing the challenge, instead of doing that, she's taking the money that she would have spent. So let's say she would have gone and gotten a Frappuccino and those things are like, what, $16 or something, <laughs> right? She puts that money into a jar and that's her fun money. And I think that's such a cool way to replace that. You want that feel good of the sugar, but it's like, you know, I'm going to put this money here and I'm going to get something, you know, better that's going to support my fitness results. And she ultimately already bought herself a pair of shoes, wow, workout awesome. shoes. So 
Krista, I am going to send you a food processor Yay. and I'm going to include a note on how to, how to take it <laughs> apart because that's pretty important. And what's really cool is two of our five recipes today, we are using the food processor again. So Krista, you're in luck with that. And also, you know, it sounds like you have a sweet tooth, which I do. I drink Everyday Fit all day long. I know that Matt, I like to call him Mateo as well. So <laughs> Mateo, he likes to drink his Everyday Fit. It's so much tastier than anything you would get at Starbucks. And it's sweetened with stevia and monk fruit. So we know these are zero sugar. So we're able to drink it and it's got all the other benefits, the vitamins and the minerals and all the stuff. So. We're gonna send you some of that as well, if you haven't tried it. Yes, Everyday Fit is, is absolutely amazing. The cool thing about Everyday Fit, if we were actually talking about habits, um, there's things called Keystone Habits, and with that, when you actually have that habit, it actually is kind of a domino for other things in your life. So instead of reaching for sugar and other things, sometimes just reaching for this will also help keep you on track. Yep. It's kind of like a mindful reminder that when you're drinking Everyday Fit, A, you're being hydrated, right? Which is really important for fat loss and, and also staying on track with your fitness. But it's also kind of a reminder that, hey, the next meal you're eating, you should probably keep it healthy, right? So it also helps keep you mindful, which is really cool. I love that. And that perfectly cues up the topic for this week, which the topic for this week is playing the finite game versus the infinite game. And I'm going to let Matt speak to it because he's so passionate about getting everyone, everyone watching, everyone in the world to play the infinite game of fitness and health. Yeah, so finite game means there's a time frame. Right now we're in a 10 week challenge. So at the end, there, there's 10 weeks, right? But our goal isn't that you're gonna be taking care of yourself and eating healthy and food prepping and working out three times a week, getting your water in, getting your sleep in, all the things that we're talking about during the challenge that we want to instill, we want you to continue those on right. after the 10 yeah, weeks. Yeah, it doesn't playing, end at 10. That's playing the infinite game. A lot of people, if you're counting down the days right now to when is the challenge over, mm. um, you're playing yeah. the wrong game. Yeah. And one of the things that with our challenges, we've been doing challenges and helping clients for over six years now. And one of the ways you know that you're playing the, the finite game versus the infinite game is if you're doing things because you're in a challenge. Right. Right. So if you're meal planning. What's your motivation, yeah. right? But if that's the only reason yeah. you're doing it is because you're on a challenge. So if you're just meal prepping and meal planning and working out three times a week just because you're on a challenge, you have the wrong mindset. And oftentimes we actually excuse our healthy behaviors because we're on a challenge. Right. Let's say you go to dinner and you go out and you're going with people that maybe are making less healthy choices. Yeah. And you go, well, I can't eat that because I'm on a challenge. Right. Right? So what happens when the challenge is over? That means fair game. Fair right? game to eat whatever <laughs> you want. Even with the challenge, right. you still have free meals that you can uh, have the foods that, quote unquote, are off limits. But with that, taking care of yourself never ends. And, and never Bedros ends. did an awesome Sunday uh, sermon on that. And he talked about your, your body is like a car. And if you only have one car, you're going to take care of it. Right. And ultimately, we have one body. So you have to take care of it, whether you're on a challenge or yeah. not. And really that. forming those habits, routines, and rituals, mm -hmm. and staying committed to the process, whether or not you're in a challenge mm -hmm. or not on a challenge. Yep. So with that, you need to embrace this as a lifestyle, not something that has an end date. And that's the yep. biggest thing between the infinite game and the finite game. And our goal at Fit Body Bootcamp is to help you play the infinite game. I love that. So guys, this week and just in the comments below, comment about this subject. Tell us how you're just getting that mental shift from the finite and the 10 weeks to this is my new life. Like this is never going to end. Like every morning when you wake up, it's like you're starting over and you get to make those choices all day long. So please comment. We're going to do the hashtag. I am fit body again, because that worked really well. And I love that hashtag. So a way that you can make this an infinite game is by having just a library of simple recipes that you can go home. We're all busy. You can go home after work. You can make these recipes that we're going to show you today because they're simple and they're just going to fit into your lifestyle. Not, hey, it's a challenge and I have all day Sunday to meal prep and I'm going to do all these complicated things. No, these are recipes that fit into a busy day for your 
eternal infinite lifestyle. So we're gonna jump right in. We actually have five recipes that we're making, which sounds like a lot. There's a lot happening here, but they're actually, they're all so simple that I feel like we're gonna just power through them. And Matt, so this is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I don't chop off any yeah. fingers, we'll be all right. <laughs> so what I like to do when I'm cooking at home I jump around between recipes because it's all about timing and efficiency for me. As a busy mom who works, yes. I can't sit here and wait for cauliflower to boil and do nothing. I'm gonna move on to the next recipe. So we are gonna just move through this as I see fit. Okay. So the first recipe, guys, I actually had never made this, and Matt brought it up. It is called a cauliflower smash. Yes. Now, Matt, do you make this recipe often? Uh, I usually make it probably three or four times a week just because it's simple, tastes great. It also fills you up because of the volume of the, the cauliflower. And it kind of feels like you're, you're cheating in a way. Yeah. And then too, when, in order to lose weight, you do have to be in a caloric deficit. Right. And where a lot of people actually go wrong is they don't eat enough vegetables mm. that are very, obviously, low calorie, but right. nutrient dense. Right. But the cool thing is they really fill you they up and do. make you feel full. So All that fiber. All that fiber. So I actually like to have it kind of like my last meal of the day because oh, cool. then it kind of makes me feel yeah. full at the end even though it's, it's low calorie, but it tastes so good that you feel like you're cheating. Yeah, so guys, for those of you who don't know what cauliflower smash is, you've never tried it, this is basically low calorie mashed potatoes where we're using cauliflower. So we're gonna do my version, and maybe Matt can give us commentary on how this differs from his, but we are gonna start, it's one head of cauliflower, and I have a pot of water that is already boiling, so Matt is gonna carefully dump that into the boiling water. Maybe. I've chopped up the head of cauliflower. You could definitely do it as a whole head, but I find that it boils faster um, when it's already chopped up, and then you don't have to deal with like this really hot, because do you boil it whole, or do you I, chop it up? I actually use steamer bags. Oh, talk so, to us about that. So efficiency is, is king, Yeah, right? for sure. So obviously if you don't have a lot of time, you can use steamer bags. Um, you may lose a little bit of the nutrient value from it, but again, the benefits of, of eating it is the most important right. thing. So three and a half minutes typically in, wow. the, in the microwave, okay. and then we go to adding all the ingredients. The food processor, okay. So I don't even deal with this. Well, we're going old school. We've got it on the burner. So guys, it was about a pot of water, half, half full of water. It was boiling. We put a head of cauliflower in there that's all chopped up. We're gonna go ahead and let it do its thing. It's gonna take about 10 minutes. Now guys, keep in mind, we're taking a hard cauliflower and we wanna turn it into creamy mashed potatoes. So it needs to be really tender, and we're going to give it time and be patient with that. The next recipe that we're going to move on to is a beef, um, a beef skillet. It's like a beef supper skillet. And I've actually never made a recipe like this, but it kind of sounds like this is one of your go-tos. Yeah, sometimes I have it two meals a day because it is versatile so that... Uh, you can take the ground beef, and it's pretty much putting like taco seasoning on it. Okay. So it's I use it as a base for a lot of my meals, and then I also make a lot of it. So I actually start the week with Smart. two pounds of ground beef and, and mix it up, uh, and then I add it to different foods. So with it, if you're doing the challenge, it would be considered a protein source. So you can pair it with the carbohydrates. You can also pair it with a fat meal, and it makes it very easy to, you know, if you're on the go, maybe you're busy, um, you come home and you're like, oh, I don't want to cook anything. Mm -hmm. You can pair that up with pretty much anything and have a meal in just a couple minutes because you just have to reheat it. So this is like you're, you're cooking the individual pieces. So you would cook the beef by itself, and then you would cook. So we're going to add to this um, a sweet potato rice. So you would cook the sweet potato rice by itself, yep. and then you would kind of assemble your meals throughout the week as you need them. Correct. That so, is smart. Yep, so if you're you're cooking the sweet potato rice, mm -hmm. you would have that separate, and then on the challenge, you would want to weigh it to what you need it to be. Got it. Um, so I'd weigh out the, the rice, and then I would weigh out my uh, ground beef, I would warm it up, and it's good to go. Now, reheating sometimes isn't, in a microwave, doesn't always taste the best, so if you right. do have time, I find reheating skillet. it in a pan, in a skillet, sure. yeah. it only takes a couple minutes to get it to yeah. the temperature you want, but the taste so is much so much better. better. You and could a even lot of, throw it in the oven. Yeah, a lot of clients struggle with the taste of reheating, Yeah. right? So it almost feels like it's fresh food, even though yeah. it's quick. I love that. Very good, okay, so we are gonna move on to turning this beautiful sweet potato into rice. Now, have you ever done this? I have not. Okay, now, 
guys, we're talking about you know making things simple, and I am kind of making it a little complicated by turning this into rice, but I wanna give you options if you don't wanna do this. We are gonna peel it, we're gonna turn it into noodles, and then we're gonna pulse the noodles in the food processor to turn it into actual little rice pieces. I like to do that when I cook because I feel like the presentation, the kids get more into it, I like it. For a lot of people, they don't wanna take those extra steps, right. especially guys. No, I would oh. probably just cook it and smash it and put my ground beef on it and call it a day. So you could do that. You could grate it, which would you know, save you a few steps. You could dice it up, chop it up really small and do it that way. But Matt has never made vegetable noodles. Never. So. My, wife, my wife has, <laughs> but I have not. So I just thought it would be fun to watch Matt learn how to use an Inspiralized. Watch so you're, you're welcome, friends. OK, so do you know how to peel a potato? Uh, I think so. Okay, here. This is our this is our little pot. So, guys, we're working with real food ingredients, and so we get to do fun things like this, where we're actually burning calories. There you go. And guys, these days, so many different grocery stores sell vegetables already spiralized. I know Whole Foods. I mean, there's several of the just natural health markets, they sell it all ready to go. So you don't have to do this step. But I also know a lot of you out there are like me, and if you can have some time in the kitchen and you can do something like this, you're actually having fun. And maybe Matt, after this experience, he's going to be really into making noodles. If I can buy it at the store already <laughs> done, I will do that. If you enjoy it, by all means, go yeah. for it. Yeah. But and if you don't, there's so many ways to make things simple for it, you. It is very true. Because oftentimes the more efficient and simple you can make it, yeah. the more likely you are to stick with it. The more tedious it is for you, if you don't enjoy it, the, yes. the less likely you are to be consistent with it. Consistency is key. And that goes back to the infinite game, guys. And so for those of you who have fun in the kitchen, for you the infinite game is having fun with healthy recipes. For those of you who convenience, like it has to be quick, you're hitting the fast food restaurants because it's quick, well guess what guys, convenience with healthy food is what you need to hit to keep it your infinite game. And what some of our clients do is during the week they don't have time for uh, making elaborate meals, but on the weekends they enjoy, it's kind of like their therapy mm -hmm. on the weekends that they can enjoy yeah. making some of the amazing recipes that you mm -hmm. have. Um, during the week they may not have time, but yep. on the weekends they, they go crazy and they enjoy it and they love it and it's kind of like therapy for them. That's my life. That's I love to spend time in the weekends in the kitchen. Look at this, like you peel better than I do. That's false. It, that's, that's actually true. <laughs> okay guys, so we have peeled our sweet potato and guys, if you are going to turn, I mean any vegetable, but sweet potato in particular into noodles, you're really looking for one that's a cylinder that's pretty um, symmetrical and even because it's going to help us as we get it into the Inspiralizer. Um, if, you, if you have one that's kind of big and lumpy, you're going to kind of have to cut it down to this shape. So we actually found the perfect shaped All sweet right. potato and I'm going to cut it in half. Now, this is the fun part. And how is our cauliflower doing? It's boiling. Okay. Does gonna, it need to get mixed at all? We can mix it a little bit. Yeah, those yeah. guys on the top might not be getting all the way. So like we said, we really, you know your cauliflower is done when it's fork tender. You don't want to stop it too soon because then once we go to blend it up, if it's not cooked all the way through, it's not going to be as creamy and as mashed potato-y as it could be. Okay. And it's kind of like chunky and hard. Yeah. In some spots. Yes. We want this, you know, infinite game. We want to enjoy it. If we don't enjoy it, we're not going to make it. Okay, guys. So this is my favorite um, turn vegetable into noodle tool. It's called Inspiralized. Um, you know what? We're going to give one of these away this week. All right. Yeah. We're going to give this away and we're going to give some protein because our protein's back in stock. Woo! Next week, it'll be back in stock. So You're going to love the protein pudding. It's oh going to change gosh. your life. Yes. For all of us with sweet tooths. Okay. So the cool thing about this, and guys, I've probably used my gosh, I, there's so many of these on the market, mm -hmm. different ones, and there's ones, handheld ones. This is by far the best one. Um, what I love is it has this little clamp. You actually see I brought my marble slab in today because it won't attach itself to wood. Wow. <laughs> so the first step is to get it clamped down onto your surface here. 
I, I guarantee you if she didn't do that, I would have been like all over the place. Well, it's very difficult. If it's not anchored, guys, it is very difficult to do this thing. Okay, so since Matt has never done this, we are gonna walk through this step by step. So we're gonna take the flat side here and there's like a little nub. I don't know what else I would call that other than nub. <laughs> a little, nub. A little um, sharp nub here. Our goal is to get it as close to the center of the vegetable as we can because that is going to help us do nice, long, even noodles. Now, guys, since we are not going to eat these as noodles, we're going to turn it into rice. I'm not going to be as concerned as getting like the perfect long noodle. There's the little short ones come out. doesn't really matter. When I am doing it to make noodles, I'm very particular. They have to be like long, perfect noodles. And what are they, how long does it take you when you make your cookbooks? Oh yeah, that takes a while. It's all about presentation. Yes. All right, I'm gonna turn this down because she I has feel... an amazing way of taking a recipe where you're like, "There's no <laughs> way that," and then you see the end picture, you're like, "How did you do that? It's magic." It's, you know, it's it's fun. Okay, so guys, this is all about applying even slow pressure to the back here, and then spinning it. Oh. Well, this is funny. <laughs> Not going. Okay, so if that happens, that means that your back was tapered a little bit too much. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut it off. And we need to have a good grip on both ends. And then we're pushing it forward here. And then you're using your hand here to apply really steady pressure because we have to push the sweet potato through the blade and we're twisting it as we go. Does this not look super fun? I'm paying close attention <laughs> so I don't fail the test. Because he knows he's next. I'm and next <laughs> and I'm live on camera, so I, I don't wanna fail. You, you guys who have done this at home, you know it's hard enough, but then when you're on camera and there's lights on you, it, it's a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good, it's working. There we go. And guys, you can see once it gets going, it is really a pretty efficient process. Watch me struggle while she's just like, it's easy. <laughs> All right, cool. So look at that. And these were actually great noodles. If we were going to make like a noodle picture, we could use these. That is nice. See, this is, I get excited about this, guys. And if you're like me, then your infinite game is going to involve one of these gadgets. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to throw this into the food processor because we are going to pulse it up and turn it into rice that is going to the, then go into our skillet. And then... Mateo is going to do the next piece. All right. <laughs> but I'm going to cut off the Cross end your fingers. of your... <laughs> okay. Cross your fingers. Don't chop off your fingers. All right. So I'm going to cut off the end for you as well. Okay. So we're centering it. And we're going here. And then he's going to uh, just apply pressure. So easy. It's so easy, it. guys. But again, you I'm don't... Apply more pressure. <laughs> You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Is it going? It's yeah, going. It's going. There's right. beautiful noodles are coming out. Isn't this fun? I feel like a pro. <laughs> uh, I wish your wife was in here right now. She'd yeah. be so proud. <laughs> okay. The beef skillet. Yes. Could you replace the ground beef with an alternative such as ground turkey? A hundred percent. That is great. And just like Matt said, you know, guys, make these recipes your own. If you, um, Ellen was telling us that, you know, you don't want to have red meat more than three or four times a week, and it could vary depending on your meal plan. So yeah, uh, use ground chicken, use ground turkey. Like I'm sure Matt, you don't always use beef. Um, I, I'll mix it up. I'll even use like lean ground bison. Ooh, bison is delicious. So switching it up to just even switching up your protein sources yep. uh, every once in a while. Just like sometimes we recommend going from the whey protein to the vegan mm -hmm. protein. Yeah. Um, sometimes just mixing up your protein sources is beneficial. Yeah. But also on the challenge, if you're doing the challenge, uh, lean ground beef, even though it's just counted as a protein, typically beef has a little bit more fat in it. So if you're having a lot of meals with lean ground beef, you may be getting extra fat, which could be slowing down your process just a little bit. So sometimes switching it up for a little bit leaner source is sometimes all you need to do to continue to make process. Guys, look at these noodles that Matt made. Is that not amazing? Man, Are I'm, you a pro. So proud? I'm a pro. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is so much fun having you here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like teaching a little kid. <laughs> No, you're great. Okay, so we don't need this anymore, so I'm gonna move this, and we are gonna pulse this in the food processor. It's very quick, 
And then Matt's going to take the food processor bowl off for me. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're just going to pulse it. That is not a pulse. So are you trying to get it as small as like traditional rice? Or? Yes. Yeah. And we had some wrap around the middle here. So yeah, we just want it to be little rice-like pieces. And Ellen, guys, I forgot to mention that Ellen is here again. Say hi, Ellen. Hi, guys. Ellen's here. Um, so Ellen, once I'm done making this noise here, why don't you speak to you know the choice to use a sweet potato rice versus white rice or brown rice, or we could use white potato or quinoa. Like there's all these different starches that we can use. Um, I'm going to pulse this a couple more times, but once this noise stops, why don't you speak to that? OK. All right, yeah. So there's a lot of different ways that you can make different, different rice options. What I love is there's so many options that you can use. and. One of the cool things about using a sweet potato or a vegetable option is it's going to be a lot lower in carb than mm -hmm. your traditional rices, right? So let's say your brown rice or a white rice, um, whatever typically you use, if it's nice, you can eat a lot more of. Your portions can be a lot bigger with a sweet potato rice um, and typically a little bit more filling because you're getting fiber in there and you're able to eat a lot more and kind of have a lower carb option. So sweet potato is excellent. That's, that's a, such a good point. Because guys, when we talk about infinite game, like let's face it, like most of us, we like to eat, and and sometimes that means we like to eat volume. Yeah. Humans tend to like to feel full. Yeah, we do. It's like I think it's instinctual or evolutional, or whatever. Like our survival depends on being full. Right. And so when we can replace, you know, rice that's made with grain with some sweet potato rice, and we're able to eat more of it, and there's fiber, and it fills us up, but it's lower calorie. Now you add that with some vegetables on top of that. Yeah. Now imagine the volume and how full you're actually going to be. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. OK, we're going to jump back over to our cauliflower smash, because I think that's done. You want to give it a little poke? Mm, not quite. I don't know how tender you want it. OK. I'm going to let the pro test the, the tenderness of well, the cauliflower here. Oh, no, it's not done. You're the one that makes this all the time. This is only my second I'm very time. good at going time cook, three minutes and 30 <laughs> seconds. OK, well, my cauliflower smash recipe has some garlic. And we're actually going to put some butter, because in your recipe, you yep. said you use butter. I don't typically use butter. I did when I made it this morning. It tasted amazing yeah so with the challenge uh, obviously everyone's got their their macros the the amount of protein carbs and fats that they need to eat so typically I tailor this recipe to my fat macros okay so I use the the smashed cauliflower as my fat macros mm -hmm. um, and sometimes but with the butter we go towards the the grass-fed butter um, now with that obviously butter is more of a saturated fat right it's really important to mix up your fats and get a wide array so if you're eating a lot of saturated fat, that's not necessarily going to be good. That can actually be inflammatory. So you want to make sure that you're getting a wide range of fats um, as well. So if you're, if this is just one of the meals that you're having, it's going to be okay. But obviously, if, we don't want you putting butter on Everything. every meal yeah. that you can have fat with. That's not going to we be gotta a good thing. We've got to have some balance. Yes. Um, you could do this with coconut oil, which is also saturated fat. Yep. And then you could do it with olive oil. I mean, you could really do it with any, any yeah. fat Sometimes source. I'll mix it up uh, with, with olive oil as well. What I kind of like about butter is it's got flavor, but it's almost flavorless. Yeah, but so, it's like got that creaminess. Like it's yes. got that like, oh my gosh, this is like, I think I'm going to make this for Thanksgiving. Like that's how good it is. Yes, it's great. Do you, yours is probably going to be better. Do, you, do you add garlic to yours? I do not. So okay. what I'll typically do is I'll just add a bunch of seasonings to it. Uh, in Michigan, we have something called M-Salt, which has garlic, pepper, okay. salt, uh, I think the in one other ingredient inside of it, like which is all in one, all in one, season all your food goes great in anything. <laughs> you can put it on, you know, any type of protein. That's very that man cooking. food friendly. <laughs> one all ingredient. All in one. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, my recipe is a little different. We are gonna smash for our smashed cauliflower. We're gonna smash three garlic cloves. So I'm gonna smash a couple, and then I'm gonna let you smash one. I've never smashed this. And before. I can't wait for you to see the flavor that this smashed garlic gives. 
And we're really, we don't need to pulverize it too much, guys. We're just, you're breaking the skin um, and you're allowing some of those liquids to come out here. All right, Matt's gonna smash the final one. Guys, you don't need a fancy, like, this is my Coco Jack. It's okay, we didn't need that. <laughs> you can literally, mm -hmm. if I'm in the kitchen alone, I'll take the back of my knife, like, be safe, but you don't need a fancy um, hammer. Okay, so with Matt's recipe, we do have butter. So it's three tablespoons of fat. We're gonna put this into our pan, which has been preheated. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this smashed garlic and we're gonna saute it up oh, with the butter. Oh, that's good, that's gonna be good. And it's gonna smell so good. And guys, you know, cauliflower doesn't really have flavor. And so the idea here is, you know, to make this um, high fiber kind of bland item taste good so we'll eat a lot of it and get the benefit is we gotta add flavor. And that's one thing I actually like to, that's why I actually like cauliflower so much is because it's so versatile that you, it will adapt to whatever you put in 100%, it, hundred percent, right? yeah. So then it can go with pretty much anything, which is really cool. I love that, guys. So right now we're just melting down our butter a little bit. And then we're gonna throw in this garlic, and my hands are gonna be nice and garlicky, yeah. my fingers, for the rest of the day. So Matt, are you having fun so far? This is great. Cooking in here. I tell all of my friends out there that this is like recess because like once a week like I'm always working and then once a week I get to come down I feel like I'm just like playing and having fun. Yes. And you all don't know she's actually the brains of Bucket <laughs> Boot Camp. She keeps us all in line. Okay guys so we've got our garlic in the pot. Our butter is melting. Can you smell it yet? It smells awesome. It smells so good. This is what is gonna just really infuse this cauliflower flavor. Okay guys, so we're gonna go into the other ingredients as both of our main ingredients are finishing up with cooking. So we need to add another creamy substance. I chose Greek yogurt. This is a plain non-fat Greek yogurt, three tablespoons. If you are not cool with dairy, you could do a coconut cream. If you are able to have more calories, you could do a sour cream. Um, do you add a creamy base? I don't. I keep it super simple, but I'm going to try it now. Yes. Oh, once you try this, like it's over. <laughs> You're never going back. <laughs> Instead okay. of four nights a week, I'm going to have it seven nights a week. <laughs> and on Thanksgiving. There we go. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be three tablespoons of the yogurt and then a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Do you put Parmesan cheese I in yours? Put cheese. Okay. I do put cheese. Okay. My, my go-tos are the butter uh -huh. and the cheese and then okay. typically salt or like the M salt that we use and that's it. Man salt. And then I mix it, <laughs> then I typically mix it with whatever protein I'm having and it makes us like, you feel like you're eating yeah. a mega meal but it's really not, it's really it's cool. So awesome. Okay guys, for those of you who don't do dairy, you don't wanna do the Parmesan, we've got nutritional yeast. Now, do you, hey, have you ever used nutritional yeast? No, I've only heard of nutritional yeast through her recipes. Do you want to smell it? Have you ever, it's, guys, we talked about nutritional yeast last week because it was another replacement that we could use. Um, it's much lower in fat and lower in calories than Parmesan cheese. Um, Ellen, do you want to speak briefly on the benefits of nutritional yeast? Because it actually packs quite a few things in here. Absolutely. It's awesome to use, and I love how easy it is to use. Really, you just sprinkle it on um, whatever it is you're making. It stirs in really easily into something that's hot, or you can top it on a salad, but it's awesome. It's actually just as high in protein as using the Parmesan. So really oh. high in protein, much lower in fat. If you're on the challenge, um, this would actually be a great option to use if you're looking for um, a protein and um, a meal that you're making that you don't want to add a lot of fat to, this is great because you're going to okay. get protein, low fat, get kind of that rich flavor. Awesome. It's also going to be really high in the vitamins and minerals to use too. So this adds a great nutritional punch to your meal. Awesome, guys. So yeah, and when you find it at the store, typically it comes almost like in a, a container of Parmesan, like how it's like a shaker. So you can get that and just stick it in the fridge and then you have and that I think sometimes option. when it actually looks like the thing mm -hmm. you're trying to replace, does, like yeah. even visually, yeah. makes you feel like you're having yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we are gonna move on to blending our amazing cauliflower smash. So Matt, if you wanna just pour that into the colander that's in our sink. So guys, you need to drain your cauliflower because we don't want all that water. We're gonna cream it up. And so we have double food processor duty for the second week in a row here. All right, look at this guy. 
I'm gonna drip all over the place here. <laughs> Perfect, so we're studio. getting our cauliflower into the food processor here. And it is hot, guys. It is hot and it is tender and it is ready to go. And I'm serious when I say I'm making this for Thanksgiving because I don't typically like um, mashed potatoes, but I really like this recipe. If you ever use a steamer bag, let it cool <laughs> off before you touch it, unless you like burning oh, your hands. Oh, good, good advice. I, is that Not that experience? I've ever experienced it either. <laughs> All right, guys, so our butter is completely melted. I didn't want to brown it too much, so we've just really heated up the, the garlic until it's quite fragrant. And we're gonna just throw that in here with our amazing cauliflower, and I wish you guys could smell it in here because it it's awesome. starting to smell so good. Okay, so we're gonna add our other ingredients, which were the quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. All of you dairy-free or looking to reduce the fat, you guys are gonna do a, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. I wouldn't do one for one. You don't really need as much to get the flavor. And then we have our Greek yogurt. And again, if you wanted to have a little more fat, you could do sour cream. Um, Ellen, did you want to speak a little bit to when you're choosing dairy? Like, I don't know. Yes. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I'm picking out ingredients like a dairy, because I don't, I don't use dairy a lot, I'm kind of like, I don't know, do I get organic? Like, is there anything I need to look for when I'm buying, let's say, a Greek yogurt or a sour cream or a butter? Yeah, there's a couple of things, Diana, that's awesome to look for when you're wanting to find something that's going to be a little bit better choice than some of the other things. Because I think dairy is a really good example. There's so many brands, so many options of yogurts and butters and cheeses out there yeah. um, that it can get confusing. So looking for some of the labels on the packages that say either organic, um, grass-fed, Hormone-free is something really important to look for if you're, you're looking at your dairy sources. Um, butter in particular, Kerrygold is a great brand to use. If you're looking at yogurt, Sobani, Faye, um, really good options to use. Awesome. So really that hormone-free, I think, is probably the biggest takeaway. Yeah. But some of the stuff with, with dairy, obviously everyone responds to dairy it's completely different. So true. So you don't necessarily have to, to go dairy-free, right? Right. It depends on how you respond to that. Yeah. And there's lots of foods on the challenge that maybe you're, they're all meant to be whole foods, which we're designed to eat whole foods, but right. some of us don't respond well to it. So you're just going to have to make that judgment. Um, and then sometimes there's a limit on how much dairy you can have. That's true. So just kind of listen to your body. Your body will tell you pretty yeah. much everything That's that so you true. need to know. If you eat a food and then you don't feel good afterwards or you're lethargic, probably means you shouldn't keep eating it, right? So yes. just listen to your body, it will tell you what you can have. What I you love can. that. Okay guys, so we're putting some sea salt in here as well. Do you salt your food when you make it? I do salt my food. Okay, and then we're putting some black pepper as well. And that's the thing that a lot of people think, like they need to avoid salt, it's gonna make them retain mm -hmm. water. But if you're drinking plenty of enough water and you're working out, you actually need more salt yeah. in your diet. So don't, don't be afraid of it, but you also wanna go more with uh, iodized salt. So iodized salt is actually good for the thyroid. A lot of people who have thyroid issues are actually uh, low in iodine. Mm -hmm. So um, you do actually want iodized salt uh, if you are having salt. Very cool. Okay, so we are going to pulse this now and I am leaving it open a little bit just because of all the steam because I cannot wait. I'm too excited for this. I'm excited for it too. I haven't had lunch yet and I'm hungry. <laughs> I told him to come hungry, so I gotta deliver on that. And guys, we're looking to basically create the consistency of mashed potatoes. So do you have any tips for when you're blending it up or what you look for? So it depends on how you like, some people like mashed potatoes where you can kind of taste the potato yeah. a little bit like and then some pieces. like it extra creamy. Yeah. What's cool with this is based on how long you blend it, you can either get it yep. super creamy or you can still have it slightly chunky. Yep. But if you leave it slightly chunky and you didn't cook it all the way through, then it's actually kind of like hard. Yes. Which I don't like that texture. Yeah. So first step was we, you really need to boil it long enough. All right. So you can choose the texture, which is really cool. I think that's enough, so let's see here. And guys, watch how I take this off. This is gonna blow your mind. <laughs> blow your mind, change your life. Oh. Woo. 
All right, guys, so we are going to pour. The first time I ever used one of these, I literally was on Google for 20 minutes because you have to align every single thing or you it doesn't do. work. It is like a, it's state of the art equipment. <laughs> like well, I think serious. it's making sure you don't cut your fingers off. That That's is pretty much true. what it's designed to do. That is true. All right, guys, look Man, at the consistency good. of this. Smells good. Right, it's that garlic and that butter in there. And Matt, do you garnish your food or do you use any fresh herbs typically? You're cute. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's well, no garnishing food. You're going to today because as Ellen explained last week. Hey, maybe the next cookbook can be called <laughs> Man Food Cookbook. Maybe well, that's... you would have to write it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, this, these are some fresh chives, but really you can put any herbs you want. How and much am I putting That's out? perfect. That's okay. beautiful. Last week, Ellen spoke about how really herbs are packed with so many different like vitamins and minerals and like even more than a lot of the lettuce and things that we yeah. eat. So guys, we have one recipe done. I'm super excited for this. Do you want to try it? I do. Is it, okay. it going to be too hot? I it might be too like hot. Should we wait? To, like... till, we'll wait till the end. You'll have to be like anticipating. I'm this. sure Burning <laughs> Tongues Live is not really good TV. <laughs> it's entertainment. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to our skillet recipe. And we've already created one of the ingredients for that, and that is our sweet potato rice. So Matt is going to take the realm on this one, and he is going to start with one pound of lean ground beef. Um, what do you look for in a ground beef when you? Uh, I go for grass fed, but okay. obviously with that, I would say 95.5 is typically what okay. I like to go for. Um, anything leaner than that, I mean, you can go leaner than that, but sometimes it it tends to dry out yeah. and then doesn't taste good or it doesn't reheat. Sure. But. Anything over 95.5 starts to get a little bit fatty. If you're having it in a lot of meals, the indirect sources of fat, which we don't count on our program, can yeah. really actually start to add up. Okay, so guys, choose your protein based around your macros. If you don't need to have fat in this meal, guys, a ground chicken breast would be amazing in this, a uh, ground turkey. So Matt's working on that. So I don't have a man spice, but I, I did simplify it down to just three spices. So we have one full teaspoon of salt, and I'm just going to add this in as he's browning the meat. And then I have one teaspoon of garlic powder. I love garlic, if you, if you haven't noticed. Garlic is great. And garlic, garlic makes everything taste better. Tastes better, and there's actually a lot of health benefits to garlic, as Ellen has explained before. Okay. And there's a lot of people that talk about like, oh, my food's bland. It doesn't yeah. taste. I think with that, it's almost kind of, you're just being lazy with the spices. That's and the true. Herbs. There's no reason for it. And this is a point that I hit on every single week is guys, healthy food tastes better than unhealthy food. And a lot of it is because we add in these fresh spices and we add in these fresh herbs and just these fresh ingredients that we're using have really good flavor. But it can also take a little while to, to get used to that because, uh, the food industry tries to make food taste better. They yeah. literally spend billions of dollars true. trying to figure out how do you get you addicted to the foods that yeah. you're eating. So sometimes when you first start with whole yeah. foods, it can taste a little bit bland. Right. But then once you get used to it and you go try to eat something mm -hmm. not so good anymore, yeah. like you, it literally starts to taste fake. Yeah. And that's really true with sugary products because, gosh, the products out there are so oversweet with the corn syrup and just the refined sugar. And then it's it's really cool as your palate transitions to appreciating the sweetness of a berry or the sweetness of some stevia, it really, I think you, there's an actual physical change to your taste buds. 100%. But once, you know, we're not doing a finite game, we're doing this infinite game, and, and having that transition happen just with your preferences and with your taste is part of it. It's a huge part of winning the game. Okay, guys, one teaspoon of sweet paprika, I love sweet paprika. You could do smoked paprika or just plain old paprika, or you could get man seasoning and put that in. That works as well. well I do. Uh, <laughs> in, in the challenge in the recipe, guys, there is actually a, a taco seasoning that oh. has basically all this stuff. There might okay. be like chili powder, um, a few other things that, that's added to it. Um, but that's that tastes really good too. So paprika is amazing. Like I love paprika. Paprika is like, so good. Do you do sweet or spiced or not sweet or smoked uh, or regular? I, I actually like the smoke. Smoked is good. I have that one too. 
Okay, so Matt is doing a phenomenal job of browning this beef. I am going to add in our sweet potato rice and he is gonna continue cooking this. Now Matt, do you think you would ever add sweet potato rice to your skillet after doing this? I think I would depending on what the flavor of the sweet. Yes. Like for me, I can't. I don't like just straight sweet potato. Okay. Like I I love potatoes. Uh, I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy. Really, from Michigan? That's yeah, so weird. Yeah, really. Midwest <laughs> likes their sweet potato, uh, steak and potatoes. But um, if it absorbs the flavor and it's kind of almost now flavorless. Yeah then I would eat it because of just all the benefits and the volume yeah. of the food. And I really think by having the sweet potato in such tiny little pieces, we really do accomplish that, you know, having all the flavors mixed together as opposed to feeling like, all right, I just have a mouthful of sweet potato right now. Because everyone, obviously, you could do rice, you could do brown rice, you can do that, but everyone responds to grains, obviously, a little bit different right. as well. Uh, so this is an easy way to have a meal where you're feeling like, it's one of your comfort foods, but yep. now it's not. It is comfort. And really, food, but speaking it's of meat and potatoes, like this, I feel like everything we're making is very meat and potatoes. Like it's very like, guys, if you love to eat hearty and like this is how you eat, like this is going to be part of your infinite game. Like just making these swaps. Okay, I am adding kale to this skillet. Do you ever add kale? I will add kale to protein shakes, okay. and that's as far as I go. Oh, good. So this is a new one for you because this, just like the sweet potato, guys, I chopped up this kale super, super tiny. And as Ellen has told me, kale is truly a superfood. There are so many benefits to this, guys. And we, you know, we always hear about dark leafy greens and like the benefit of dark. Guys, I've never seen a darker, leafier, greenier that's, that's thing than this, right? And so by chopping it up really tiny. Oh, and the other thing, guys, you do have to um, take the stem off. So I will show you if you haven't worked with this before. And this is dinosaur kale. But you wow, yes, There's dinosaur kale. Isn't this cool? This is my favorite kind of kale. It is also called Lacinato. How do you say that, Ellen? I don't know. Uh, if you... is it, can you hear me, Diana? I think yeah. it's the Latina, the Latina kale. Latina. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I call it dinosaur kale, and sometimes they'll list it like that at the store. Okay, guys, so kale has this really thick, like, spine to it. And so whenever I'm going to chop it, I literally, I just pull it off of that, or if, I don't know if you want to call it a spine or a stem, whatever it is, you don't want it in here. It's actually too fibrous. So I'll just strip it off from one side and then strip it off from the other side. And then we will chop up this leafy part and get rid of the extra, extra tough part because we don't want our food to be extra tough. I'm like the king of hiding vegetables. <laughs> and I, I know a lot of clients, because I've worked with thousands of clients, um, not everybody loves vegetables. I think it becomes an acquired taste right. and just getting used to it. But also, um, you know, when you just try to have a plain vegetable and you're not mixing it with things, yeah. like sometimes it doesn't taste great. Um, so being able to find ways to sneak them in. Mm -hmm. Protein shakes are the easiest place to yeah. sneak in greens because it's still green, yeah. right? And some people, I think, are allergic to green. It's so pretty. Um, huh? But you can hide it in your protein shakes and, and get all the value of having your vegetables, but you're not tasting it anymore. You're tasting the protein shake. So guys, this was two cups of the very finely chopped up kale that we just added. Now guys, I wanted to make this skillet like extra protein. And so we're actually gonna add in egg whites. So Matt, I'm gonna have you scoot down to the next skillet. All right, we're gonna turn next this skillet. one on, yes. So and one, of the, one of the misconceptions of people for breakfast, they struggle because they're like, do I have to eat eggs again? Yeah. Or a uh, protein shake, and yeah. they feel like sometimes that's their only options, but it's just a, like in our society, there's something wrong with having normal protein for, for breakfast. Sure. You can have this for breakfast mm -hmm. if you wanted. Like you can It'd make- be amazing. Like a Obviously, hat. we're gonna add some, some egg whites, but you mm -hmm. could also put it in an omelet. You could mm -hmm. take this and put it in an omelet. Um, and then obviously, if you're, you're going low fat, an egg white, mm -hmm. when we talk about volume and getting your protein in, like it's gonna fill you up. I'm a bit of a weirdo. I, sometimes I eat salads for breakfast. Which is cool. I, actually, in one of my books, I have like breakfast salads. Because, I don't know, starting the day with like fiber and then adding in your protein to your salad. It's yeah. just because it's not a cultural, cultural norm, yes, right? We're exactly. used to, you eat either 
eggs or yeah. you eat cereal. Or like or just grains and sugar in general, food. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do, so I have this on. She's brave, she's touching the pan. I have no feeling left in my hands because I've burned them so many times. I literally have no feeling left in them. Wow. Okay, so this is one cup of egg whites. And once this skillet is warm, Matt is going to um, scramble these egg whites over here. I didn't want to throw it into our skillet with our already cooked stuff because it gets kind of gross. Yeah. But if we, you, you don't have to do egg whites. You could just do scrambled eggs if you want to add in more protein. But scramble it until it's soft on the side and then we're going to mix it in. Okay. It's a better consistency. It does get weird. Sometimes I, I put the liquid egg white in there okay. and it just gets, yeah. like, if you're using traditional egg whites, not actually cracking them from the eggs, they're mm -hmm. they're a little bit more runnier, yep. and it's it's hard to actually get them fully cooked when you put it inside yep. of. Not yep. that I've ever tried it. And really, what we have going on in the skillet right now, guys, we have browned ground beef. We have this the sweet potato rice that's almost like caramelizing as it's being cooked here. And now we've got our kale, which is starting to wilt. So we don't want to mess this up by adding in liquid egg. We're gonna add in like a scrambled egg. So guys, I'm actually gonna put the lid on because this kale, you see how thick it is. And the way that it starts to taste better and more mild is by getting nice and tender. Not having that crunch. Yes, no, we definitely I don't want the I honestly think the thing that bugs me about kale is the crunch. The crunch? Yeah. I love kale, I don't know why. I just love it. Okay, so Matt is gonna start in on the egg whites, guys. And then the only other thing we're gonna add to the skillet once Matt is done with that is some fresh mozzarella. And this is the same ingredient that we used last week when we made our pizza. And Ellen explained that, you know, when you're looking for fresh dairy, if you can find cheese that is packed in water, it's gonna be lower, with, lower in the preservatives, it's gonna be fresher, there's not gonna be as many additives. So it's, it's actually healthier. Now, when you are adding cheese to your skillets, what do you typically add? Um, or do you add cheese to your skillets? It depends on if it's a protein fat meal yeah. or a protein carb meal. If it's just a protein carb meal, um, like this would be considered protein carb, then I would probably not, not add the fat. Okay. And if you are, then you would just need to take some fat out of your other meals to, to compensate for that. And guys, if you're not counting your macros at this point, if you're really just getting started with eating healthier and you're looking at this as something to make for your family and to dish up for your kids, then you don't need to be as granular about, you know, is this a carb meal? Is this a fat meal? Yep. Guys, all of these ingredients are healthy. And as we've been, you know, the point we've been driving home is like, these are, are fibrous ingredients that you can eat more of. So if you were to make like a hamburger- And harder to overeat. So much harder to overeat because our your belly's gonna get full, but it's full of a lower calorie thing. Guys, if you compare this beef supper skillet to a hamburger helper, where a hamburger helper, it's got that powdered sauce. I've I've made them back in the day. Yeah. Actually, B and I'm fed me many of those. <laughs> yeah. We would make the tuna helper, and I would be like, it calls for one can of tuna, but I'm putting in three. So it's like <laughs> high protein. Yeah. But it's still, it's like that powdered sauce with all of those added and just fillers and gosh only knows what kind of chemicals and then you're adding some kind of um, heavy cream and then it's just noodles it's like refined processed noodles and you guys you can eat more of this and feel more satisfied and full than you could that but you're still going to be working towards your results and just playing that infinite game yeah so oftentimes people think that when they start a with their fitness, they gotta make all these radical changes, yeah. but just some of these small changes, exactly. and then listening to your hunger cues and eating yeah. until you're, you're full or satisfied. Like when you first get started, now when you're trying to really dial it in even more, then you need to start being more aware of right. your calories and macros. Exactly. But when you yeah. first get started, just being making these easy swaps yeah. is all it really takes. Yeah, making a healthy meal like this as opposed to something that you know, really not healthy for your family. So guys, really, you're you're on your own journey. So please don't take the talk of macros and just feel like overwhelmed because you do not necessarily need to go there yet. No, we've had tons of clients that have lost like a ton of weight just being mindful about their choices, making better habits, mm -hmm. right? And really focusing on the process um, and, and just learning their hunger cues and making small swaps as they go. Yeah 
is all they needed yeah. to do. And guys, it's fun. Like once you start doing it and you accomplish that, like like Krista with like giving up her sugary Starbucks and like it's it's so rewarding when you can start to just transform your lifestyle. And yeah, you start to see it physically and your health goes in, in a, a better direction, but it's just, it's also, it's fun and rewarding, like in other ways. And just making, knowing that you're making these healthy choices makes you feel better about yourself. Exactly, yeah, there's so many benefits, guys. And I'm excited that you're on this journey with us. Okay, our kale is sufficiently wilted here. It almost becomes like a prettier color green. I mean, it, it was kind of like a dark, I don't know what color you would call that, but now it's more vibrant. I get very passionate about looking. kale. That's perfect. So Matt is gonna mix, or he's gonna dump that in here. We're gonna mix that in, and then we're just gonna add some mozzarella, and this is gonna be done. And we're gonna garnish it, because I'm teaching you how to garnish. All right, I love it. <laughs> My wife will probably appreciate it. <laughs> Yay. And when you're looking at egg whites at the store, you can definitely get them in the carton. That saves you time. But make sure that the carton actually just says egg whites. Yes. Because there are plenty that add a bunch so of true. different chemicals and different things in them that obviously increase the shelf life. Mm -hmm. But typically anything that increases the shelf life is not going to be good for you. It's not good for your And life. as humans, we weren't designed to put it inside of our body. Okay guys, so this is a fresh ball of mozzarella. I get to do this two weeks in a row, where it's just, I get to crumble it up and it's super fun. And you did ask what type of cheese that, that we take. Typically yes. it's, it's a raw cheese or like a hard cheese that we shred ourselves. Okay. Not the cheese that you find in the bags. Again, now they add all these chemicals, all these non-caking type yeah. things. That, that make it last in the bag forever. Yep. Uh, so it's a much heavier, so if you like shredded type cheese, mm -hmm. Get the, get the hard cheese as minimally processed as humanly possible. Typically when it's a hard cheese, it means it's not like processed. Okay. And if it's shredded in a bag, then it's gonna be processed and have a bunch of things that, that you don't wanna be putting inside of your body. And if you want mozzarella, buy it in water because that will be My wife fresher. loves mozzarella in water. There we go. All right, you wanna mix this, give it the final stir. And then for our garnish, I chopped up some cilantro. Are you a fan of cilantro? I am in minimum quantities. Minimum quantities, okay. Well, we also have chives, so if you prefer chives, we could add that. I'm going with the flow. You're going with the flow, okay. So we will do a little bit of cilantro. The next recipe is actually going to be something that we can add to this meal for more flavor and some healthy fat. And Matt, you're gonna have to explain to me where you came up with the name of this recipe. It's probably the simplest recipe you'll ever see me make and Matt calls it poor man's guacamole. <laughs> I don't know why this guy is poor because to me, <laughs> avocados are like luxury uh, food. So where did you come up with the name? It's, it's like a lesser version of, uh, you don't have to buy all these fancy ingredients and chop up onions and, because the salsa actually is already pretty much a lot of the stuff that you were gonna put in the it The flavor, anyways. yeah. <laughs> um, so I just put salsa with an avocado, add some salt, and uh, voila, you we're, have a poor we're man's gonna, guacamole. We're gonna do it right now. This looks amazing. We're gonna cover this because this is your lunch. We need, still need to try the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is kind of like I feel like me. we need to do all the work and then we can all right. enjoy it. All right. Okay, so we are making poor man's guac. I feel like we should call it simple man's guacamole because. <laughs> it's probably more politically correct, that's and, fine. And I think, okay, choose your guac, or choose your avocado. These are California avocados. Do you guys have Michigan avocados? Have you taught them how to like pick an <laughs> avocado yet? No, you can. So the, the key, if you, if you go to the store, a lot of people don't buy avocados or they just pick it. Uh, you actually, depending on when you're gonna actually use it, Kay. you wanna make sure that it's, it's ripe, but not too ripe. For example. This one looks a little too ripe. That yeah, that one's like, if it's squishy. like super squishy, yeah. uh, not good. This, I, think I mean, you can have it, but it's gonna be kind of more brown. You don't want it to be brown. It's like a banana, Yeah. right? So if it's like super brown and black, unless you're using it for banana bread. <laughs> or in a smoothie, in a sm <laughs> Yeah, sm if you want a sweet smoothie, that's fine, but you want it uh, like tender to the touch that it can encave, but not too much. So are we looking at this at all? Like if, I always kind of look if it's kind of starting to poke out or like it's a little bit loose, Wow. the stem. I don't know. I don't know if there's any logic to that, guys, but that's. I, what I, do. I have no idea on that. But and I'm curious so how just, you cut yours, because I'm going to show go, you how I cut mine. All right, I just go straight down See, the. See, I start at the top, <laughs> and then open it up. 
This is where it's going to get dangerous. If I cut off any fingers, don't cut uh, any fingers. We got, we got a problem. All right, we're at the same. Oh, but we both did pretty good here with the color. Now it I looks don't really know. Nice. I don't know what the. So for the first one, it's very easy. I just take a spoon or a fork and scoop it out. What, how are you removing your seed? See, I don't know the right way to I'll do it. I'll show you guys how I do I it. I would appreciate that because I end up okay. getting like a bunch of the avocado around yeah. and then I use my fingers and Well, and it kind of depends on how ripe it is because if it's if it's not ripe enough, some of the flesh is going to stick to it. But I always do this. Hold on. Okay. I stab it and then I twist it and then it comes out. Stab and twist. Look at this, Matt. And then you go over the garbage can and you just hit it Whoa. on the side of the... You, like you have no idea how I'm excited. Look at this. <laughs> It's perfect. I taught Matt something, guys. Yes. He taught me a lot about man food. Really, what I've learned is simplify everything. <laughs> That's the goal. I okay, so like maybe this should be called caveman guacamole. Caveman guacamole. So, so guys, Matt is just scooping it all out. What I like to do is I like to slice it. I do that next. You do that in the bowl. <laughs> this is okay. See, you I'm guys learning. are getting options. I'm learning. <laughs> Well, I don't know that this She's is... She's a sophisticated cook, and I'm, uh, I'm a man. So I actually just cut Get it up. Because you're going to smash it anyway, so it doesn't need to be nice and pretty. But it actually helps um, with the consistency when you go to smash so you it. you guys, now, my method, as we scoop it out of the skin, it's in these nice little, little cubes. But as you will see, when you <laughs> smash it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, guys. <laughs> Maybe it smashes better, but if you have a... The problem is if, if you have a hard avocado, it's not going to smash. Yeah. And then it's really hard to make a guacamole type texture. Do they have avocados in Michigan? Yes, but they're imported <laughs> from Mexico. Oh, usually. okay. Not California, huh? No, not typically. So they tend to be a little bit smaller. Smaller ones? Okay. You know you have like a real avocado uh, when it's actually decent sized. My wife's from Venezuela and the Venezuelan avocados are like Ginormous. My mother-in-law has an avocado tree, and they're they're green skinned, but they're like this. Ginormous. They're yes. so good. Yeah. Okay, I need a fork. So when they first when they first came here, they're like, what, "This isn't an avocado. <laughs> what is this little thing?" Yeah. So uh -huh. I like to smash it up as as much as possible. You don't need to obviously use a food processor, but this is almost like the mashed potato thing, where yeah. if you like your your guacamole chunky, you don't have to smash it that much. But if you like your guacamole smooth, it's all about preference. Now for the salsa, this typically, is a third a cup. Okay, typically with the salsa, um, obviously it depends on how much of an avocado mm -hmm. that you're using. Yeah. Um, but I actually like more of a medium to hot because it adds more flavor. Spicy. Because an avocado is pretty mild. It is. Right? It doesn't, yeah. unless you add some salt to it, it's really not a whole not lot of flavor. Not a lot flavor. of flavor, yeah. So the, the salsa for me is where you add that flavor to it. And then it can go on literally any protein. Right. Like it, you can take a dried out chicken breast, yep. put this on top of it, put and it tastes amazing. Put your simple man guacamole on it. That's right. All right, so there's a bowl for you. Yeah, you have a whole bowl there. And I don't know how much you typically do, but I did a third a cup. I just eye it up. I know I know a lot of people when they're making recipes like preciseness. Oh, I don't. No? Everyone okay. likes that. I mean, so many people. But when you post a recipe online, you have to be very specific. Yeah, if you, if you <laughs> make, make a recipe book without precise <laughs> recipes. I tried it. The publisher's like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I add lemon. I always add lemon to my avocado, guacamole, anything. You could do lime as well. So I'm just going to do a little squirt there. I don't. You don't. Okay. But if you want it to last longer. Yes. So adding the acidity of that actually makes it last longer, but yep. also... If you are making something like this, it needs to be airtight because it's the oxygen that makes it brown. Oxidation, right? Oxidation yes. makes it brown. And then oftentimes you can just, if you were to make this, there's going to be a layer of brown on the top if you uh, don't make it fresh. I typically yeah. just make it fresh because it doesn't yeah, take a whole lot of time. Yeah, that was so simple. You guys just... Um, but if you leave it, make sure that it's covered as much as possible. Cool. And then... Um, I imagine you, can imagine scoop you want the, salt. Yes. Salt and then you is can, very important. Then you can scoop the, the brown a little layer off the top, and then it's going to be green underneath. Don't eat that part. That's kind of yucky. All right, guys, that was it. That is so simple. Mine had lemon added. Matt's did not. We're going to serve this over our beef supper skillet. This does not look like guacamole, though. It's amazing. No, actually, I made it this morning for the photo, and then I ate half the bowl. Cause I'm like, this is so good. Yeah, you're <laughs> I welcome. I had a fat meal this morning. It was amazing. You're welcome. 
Guys, there is one recipe left, if you can believe it. We have done so much today, and we have so much to eat as soon as we're done. <laughs> but Matt so kindly is sharing his dessert recipe. And if you thought this was easy, the dessert recipe is actually potentially easier than this. And it's not even dessert, it just tastes like dessert. This <laughs> is actually true. every day. <laughs> I have a combination of this meal uh, during the challenge. Okay. Um, and even, so I live in Michigan, I'm out here in California. Um, so how do you stay on track when, when you're traveling? Right, that's Sim a big one. Simplicity is, is key. Um, at the hotel, Matt has a fridge. Okay. Um, so I actually went to the store, I got Greek yogurt, I brought mm -hmm. my True Lean vanilla protein. Um, you can also use the chocolate, you can also use the V, like yes. it all works, right? Yes. So, Any True lean protein works. Um, and then in the morning before I came here, literally like two minutes, I have one of my meals for the day and mm -hmm. I, I don't have to worry about it. All right, let's it. do it. There, we got two bowls, we got two spoons, we got some yogurt there. And I don't know about you, but when I travel, I actually crave like more like sweet stuff oh, yeah. and stuff that's, that's off plan. I think it's the stress of traveling. I think it's also sometimes, um, you know, when I used to travel, it used to just be like vacation, right? Yeah. Fun. So you kind of get like vacation mindset yeah. where you, you let loose a little bit. Yeah. But then when you're traveling every month, that's a problem. That's right? true because so, infinite game, guys. You can't get off the meal plan. So when we're talking about bad habits, one of my bad habits was when I would travel. Look at that is. I would kind of get get off plan and, and lose my habits, right? Um, and also sometimes on the weekends, it's easy yep. to, to overeat. That's true. So when you, last week you guys were talking about bad habits, that was mm -hmm. mine, but knowing that's a bad habit, you have to do what it takes to, to overcome them. So for me, it's about having a plan and then being able to have the food so that I'm not reaching for convenience foods, which is easy to do when you're traveling. I love that. So it's just being mindful. Okay, so All we right. got two bowls, we got two spoons, we've got so, yogurt. So Matt is gonna show us how much he typically uses. I uh, I know you. I saw your recipe ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I actually use a, a one to one ratio. Okay. Um, I find that gives it the, the best texture. So yogurt, one cup. Yogurt to? One cup to one scoop. Ooh, so that's higher in protein than I typically do. So I'm thinking that that will give us a, maybe a, um, a creamier pudding. So I actually drain the water. I'm not sure what causes the water, but when you first get it, there's not water, yeah. but as soon as you open it, there, there's water. Okay. Um, and I don't want to be mixing that. Typically, I'll take a cup measurement. I'll okay. put it in there and measure it precisely, um, but I'm not sure if we have yeah, one. We're gonna have to eyeball so we're gonna, it. So we're gonna, we're gonna eye it. This is actually, you really can't go wrong though, guys. No, this Amazing. is actually more creamy than what I normally get, so we'll see how. So this is a non-fat plain Greek yogurt. Is that what you typically do? Yeah, yep. Okay. I try to get it as low as fat as humanly possible. Um, and then I'll take one scoop, which this vanilla like mixes so good and makes it so good. absolutely amazing. And guys, if you haven't tried our vanilla protein yet, we have been out of stock because that's how good it is. It is gonna be back in stock by next Monday. You want a scoop? I do want a scoop okay. or two. Give it give me the amount that you're using. No, that's that's the That's good? That would be a lot of protein okay. right there. But right there, obviously not everyone's protein requirements are gonna be this much. This is quite that's a bit for, for one person. Yeah. Uh, typically what I make mine for is a protein and a carb meal. Okay. Which when, uh, so my protein is at about 48 grams of protein and my carbs right now are around 47. 47 grams of carbs from fruit is insane. So the last two days I, I've made this and, and people at HQ here are like, oh my God, that's so much fruit. I'm like, it fits my carbs, it works. All right, so show us, once you have that mixed up, I wanna see about how much fruit you would put on yours. Oh man. And guys, for all of you parents out there, this is a dessert that your kids will actually eat. Yes. And you can feel good about because it is so wholesome and really, especially with kids, it's kind of like they want something after dinner that's sweet, but if you give them this versus if you give them ice cream, it's not even that big of a difference to them. It's they're getting something that's fun and sweet and you're getting to give them dessert. Yeah, so typically, um, so for me, it's actually about 16 ounces of fruit, which Ooh. is like a pound of fruit, Dang. which mm. is insane. Uh, we don't have time for that on here, right? <laughs> um, and I actually do uh, typically a mix of berries. Okay. Um, I like strawberry, my favorite combo is strawberry and raspberries. Yeah, we're gonna You would probably this. slice those, right? I would slice those, and then it yeah. depends on how thin you actually want to, do we have a cutting board or just? You can just 
Do it right there. All right. I almost cut my oh finger boy. off. Oh boy, we've gone, we've, it's we've worst done so well, happened. guys. We've gone so far. And then <laughs> I usually go with organic berries yes, for sure. Um, and then I always make sure I wash them uh, before we go. But very good. Typically, I'll just cut them this way. I kind of like okay. my strawberries a little bit more chunky. Okay. Right. Um, so I usually put in about uh, ten ounces of strawberries and then six ounces. And the reason I go six ounces of rabbit berries is because the carton's usually six oh, ounces. Oh, there you go. So you just dump a carton right. in. Right. Perfect. But berries are absolutely awesome. They got a lot of phytochemicals, antioxidants, um, and a lot of fiber. So they're going to keep make you feel full. Well, and the thing with berries as well is that they're lower glycemic than a lot of other fruit. Which, Ellen, do you want to speak to that a little bit about why berries are such a good option for people who are reaching for fruit for dessert instead of something else? Absolutely, and you guys kind of, yeah. kind of touched on it a little bit, but they are they're definitely going to be your lower sugar option than some of your other fruits. We think about our fruits and some of the ones that are highest in sugar, bananas and apple and those larger fruits, the berries have the seeds in them, right? And the seeds mm. contain so much fiber, and they take up a lot of space in those berries, and in relation to that, then the sugar and actually what we're intaking is a lot lower. I love that. Which, it's crazy to me that berries are one of the healthiest fruits when they taste so good. Especially when they're ripe and they're in season. It's like, I, it's almost like the best thing you can even eat for a dessert is a fresh berry. And then too, like just even variety standpoint, you can just mix up your berries and then every day you have yeah. kind of a, a different combination. And it doesn't feel like you're eating the same things all the time. So this, this isn't going to be like my normal meal size. This is kind of like a... <laughs> Guys, he's actually going to eat this when we're done because he's hungry. Yes. <laughs> he's preparing his snack here. That's right. And it looks so nice. Like it looks beautiful with all the different colors. Okay, so he's mashing it up too. He's covering his I want to make sure every bite has oh. fruit in it. See, I don't normally do that. I normally just sort of like have it on top, but that makes sense. And then if you do raspberries, the raspberries actually kind of smush Ooh. and it colors the entire... <gasps> Uh, yogurt That's makes fun. it yes I'm doing this with my kids tonight this is awesome and then other combinations that you can do so if you like kind of like chocolate mm. and um, more decadent type desserts um, one of the things that I also will do for like a fat meal mm -hmm. now don't do don't do multiple meals of this a day again it's sure. it is gonna be a lot of dairy at that point mm -hmm. right um, so I'll take the chocolate or I'll take the, the vegan. So yeah. obviously the, the vegan is brownie. Yes. Right? Love the vegan. And then so rich good. dark uh, Dutch chocolate. Yeah. So for one of my meals, one of my favorite things to actually do is take this Greek yogurt and then nut butter. Ooh. Um, and then I'm sure you could add different things to yeah. it to even intensify that, Ooh. that sweetness. So that would be a really creamy, rich pudding. Yeah, and it's just a meal. So it tastes like dessert, but it's actually a meal. So yeah. it's one of the things I truly enjoy having every That's single awesome. day, and it fills me up. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed these recipes. They're man recipes. They're simple. They, they fit into your infinite fitness and health lifestyle. Matt, thank you for cooking with me. Thank you for having this me. This has been so fun, and I can't wait until next time you come and cook with me what other simple recipes you're going to teach me. I'm going to have to spice up my life <laughs> over the next couple of months. Maybe next time you can bring the man salt or yes. what the man seasoning yeah. so that I won't spend so much time measuring out different spices. It'll change your life. It'll change my life. Awesome. Guys, share with us your thoughts on the finite game versus the infinite game. How are you making these tweaks that you are looking past the 10 weeks? You are looking to, this is something that I do now. This is who I am now. So guys, share, hashtag I am FitBody. Somebody is gonna win one of those really cool and spiralized little gadgets so you can make veggie noodles like Matt is gonna do. Matteo's going it, home. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm gonna throw in some protein because we've been out of stock because it's just so popular. I'm gonna throw in protein as well. And guys, come back next week. It's gonna be Thursday again. I don't, I'm not 100% sure if I have a guest, but I will tell you, I'm thinking pumpkin pie. Woo. Yeah, because I mean, Thanksgiving is coming, the holidays are coming, and I figure for all of you bakers out there, you know, you're, you're starting to formulate your plan for the holidays, and as this is an infinite game, part of that is changing out some of your traditions around the holidays to be healthier. But as you will see, 
just as amazing, if not more. As so, always. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Have a great week and stick with it.